the more we learned, the more devastating this fact became, as we began to understand just how interconnected each species are with each other, and even the role they play in maintaining the chemistry of the ocean and our planet's atmosphere. It sounds just mind-blowing, but the power of animals moving up and down through the water column, in terms of mixing, is as great as all the wind, waves, tides, and currents in the seas combined. And this has a huge impact on the physics, the chemistry, and the biology of the seas. All this churning of the sea may be one of the ways the oceans help absorb heat from the atmosphere. As animals swim through the water column, it creates a powerful downwelling of the warmer surface waters to mix with the colder waters below. And although more research needs to be done, the decimation of marine life may be interfering with this process and contributing to warmer sea temperatures. The bottom line, the oceans and the life within it play a much bigger role in climate than we ever expected. And it turns out that the life in the oceans is absolutely crucial for holding on to carbon and preventing it from being released to the atmosphere. We understand that leaving trees or planting trees really helps the carbon equation, but nothing matters more than maintaining the integrity of ocean systems. I mean, these big animals, even the little ones, they take up carbon. They sequester carbon when they sink to the bottom of the ocean. The ocean is the biggest carbon sink on the planet. If we want to address climate change, the first thing we do is protect the ocean. And the solution to that is very simple, leave it alone. Try to equate it to this being a spaceship. The Earth is a spaceship. It's on a trip around the galaxy. It takes 250 million years just to make one orbit. And every spaceship has a life support system, provides us with the food we eat, the air we breathe, and regulates the climate, the temperatures. That life support system is run by a crew of earthlings, and there's only so many crew members you can kill before the machinery begins to break down, you run out of engineers. And that's what's happening, we're killing off the crew. One of the most important crew members on this spaceship Earth are actually marine plants. Pareka, these coastal plants can store up to 20 times more carbon than forests on land. In fact, 93% of all the world's CO2 is stored in the ocean with the help of marine vegetation, algae, and coral. And losing just 1% of this ecosystem was equivalent to releasing the emissions of 97 million cars. By continued extraction of fish out of our oceans, we are essentially deforesting our oceans by not only removing the fish, but the act of removal. The methods of removal are devastating to habitat, to ecosystems. And it's even more so there because it's out of sight, out of mind. Trawling was by far the most destructive form of fishing. The largest trawl nets are so big they could swallow whole cathedrals or up to 13 jumbo jet planes. The nets drag heavy weights at the bottom, scarring the sea floor that were once abundant with life, leaving nothing but a barren wasteland behind. This was just like bulldozing pristine Amazonian rainforest, except it was much, much worse. Every year, approximately 25 million acres of forest are lost. This was equivalent to losing about 27 soccer fields per minute. However, bottom trawling wipes out an estimated 3.9 billion acres every year. This was equivalent to losing 4,316 soccer fields every single minute, tallied up across the year. This was equivalent to wiping out the land area of Greenland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, the UK, Germany, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Turkey, Iran, Thailand and Australia combined. Where are the big environment groups? Why aren't they all over this like a rash? It's so obvious. It's just shouting in our faces. It is the fishing industry that is destroying the fish and the rest of the life of the seas. How much more obvious does it need to be? And yet, for the most part, they are silent. They are not speaking out against it. They are deliberately not engaging with the most important issue of all. Many researchers feel that we should be at about 30% of our oceans being protected. But, in reality, we're at 5% now of marine protected areas. 
but that's misleading because over 90% of those marine protected areas still allow fishing. So in reality, less than 1% of all of our oceans are being regulated. Oceana is the world's largest marine conservation group, but there isn't a single mention of reducing or eliminating seafood consumption. Instead, the organization recommends one of the best ways to save fish was to eat fish that is sustainable fishing.